Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be looking at three steps to take before you start investing. Now, this is according to financial advisors. I'm going to give you my personal take on this, guys, because it is very, very important. Now, investing in the market is what makes people and allows people to really achieve their biggest goal, whether it is purchasing a house, um, sending children to colleges, um, or being able to retire. You're going to need some sort of investment vehicle if it is through work in the manner of a 401k plan, 403bs, a couple different variations, putting money into IRAs, investment accounts, all of that is very, very important. Yet some people put their money in stocks really before they're ready, which is the reason why we wanna go through these three steps to make sure you are financially set and ready to go through here. Now to achieve the benefits of long-term investing, that is right guys, we said long-term investing, um, if you can't do all three of these things, you're in a really good spot to, to not invest, honestly. Um, you, you really want to go through, you want to make sure that you hit all of these points and really take time, take a conscious effort in thinking about these points and getting them all set. Number one, establish your goal. Now, what is your goal to invest? This is really probably one of the biggest things that I think um, a lot of people really overlook. So when you set an, an established goal, if it is sending your kids to college, if it is buying a home in five years, seven years, 10 years, whatever it may be, if it is retiring at the age of 50, 55, 60, whatever it is, guys, you have to know what you're going to achieve because fundamentally what is gonna happen is when you're looking to achieve this goal, when you remember this goal and exactly what you're saving for, what you're investing for, it is really gonna be a, di a big dictator on if you take money out. Now, another thing to remember with this is depending on the goal, it has a very different horizon, very different timeline, guys, where if you're looking, again, to send your kids to school, if your kids are already 16, well, chances are in the next two years, you're gonna need the funds. If you're looking to buy a house, what is the frame? If you're looking to retire, well, it's an entirely different picture. If you're 20 years old, 30, or if you're already 50, getting ready for retirement. Now, one of the big thing is when you have time on your side, you can take a lot more risk. Now, the chances of the market when you're 20 putting a lot of money into the ability and kind of even the time aspect to get money back if you suffer massive losses within the market itself is on your side guys because at that point you're probably not putting an incredible amount in and you have a lot of years now for example some people feel comfortable investing 80 percent of their money in stocks for retirement where a lot of people do split between savings, stocks, bonds, things of that nature, again, depending on what you're, what you're looking to put the money into. For any type of goal, you will want to reach under four simple years. Um, cash or liquid uh, savings accounts are where it's gonna be. One of the big things that we've talked about, guys, many times on this is the high interest uh, savings accounts, the high yield savings accounts. We see them upward of three, four, even 5% right now. Again, if it is the short-term money, if it is the emergency fund, 100% where the money should be invested, guys. If you're making a couple percent on a liquid savings account, absolutely, that is where you want to put your money short-term. When you start looking at, let's say, five years plus, that is when you want to start looking in the market and put money there. It's usually not worth the risk of losing the money if you know you're going to need it pretty soon. Of course, this is a really big factor when it comes to, again, identifying exactly what the goal is and exactly the timeline that you need. Upfront, identifying it, write it down, guys. I cannot stress it enough. If you actually write it down, you are significantly more likely to achieve the goal that is written down that you can see, that you can look at, put it in a place that you frequent, uh, make sure you can realize the goal and also what strides you, you're kind of making towards that goal. Personally, I always set up milestones. It is a really good way, guys. So one of the big milestones, of course, when it comes to a investing retirement account is when you hit that 50K mark, maybe when you hit that 100K mark, depending on how much you put in there, guys, it is a really, really good feeling when you get to those milestones and you start seeing it kind of snowball as you get more money in there. Now, the number two, understanding your budget and your behavior. This is one of the biggest thing, guys. Um, research shows that investing money into the market and saving are the absolute most rewarding to an individual. To be able to do this, you wanna make sure that you handle both your income, your expenses, and your spending. You don't wanna be the person who puts money in a savings account only to take it out a couple days later. Put money in the market just to take it out a couple days later. There really needs to be um, a general rule or general guideline for investing on 
understanding your budget. Of course, on this channel, we talk a lot about the budget. You really need to know what you can put away and what you can realistically put away. Now, for a lot of people, guys, this might be a little more challenging because you know wanting to put a lot of money into a investment account and over a long term without having to touch it. Again, this is really one of the very, very biggest things. Um, life can change all the time, guys. Things can happen. You have to budget and know exactly what you're putting in. Whether you're doing the 50, 30, 20 rule where 50% is kind of your fixed expenses, you have that 30%, which is kind of the the um the the, the repayment portion or, or the investment, the re the the bills that are not kind of the set bills, and then that 20% that is actually going into the debt repayment and also the investment side of it. Again, a lot of different budgeting methods that you can take into account when really getting this set. And the final one, guys, of course, is the emergency fund the fundamental building block when it comes to budgeting, when it comes to finance. If you're putting your money in the market before you have an emergency fund, chances are you're going to disrupt your investment or if you're going to take out a considerable amount of money when you do not need to. Now, most experts agree, similar to myself, guys, three to six months of expenses is what you wanna be sitting on and you wanna be sitting on that in a cash account. Now, what I mean by cash account is, you know, you don't have, $10,000 sitting in $100 bills in your house. A cash account is something that you're going to have access to if an emergency arises in a matter of a day, probably at the very most, if not less of a time for that emergency fund. This is going to be your kind of fallback when it comes to the finances. So if you're suffering a job loss, an unexpected expense, your car breaks down, something that is kind of outside of the norm with more of a unexpected expense, that is the utilization of the emergency fund. Now, when you do use that emergency fund and you do borrow some money from it, number one goal after that is repaying that emergency fund, guys. You cannot deplete the emergency fund without having the ability or or really the, the drive to replace the money that you used out of there. It, it is very traumatizing um, for a lot of people, especially now with everything going on in the market, with inflation, with everything all in all, guys, even from, again, a financial planning aspect of it. A lot of people are keeping a little bit more money sidelined. So where normally we say three to six months of emergency fund kind of sitting aside, a lot of people are saying, you know, six to nine months, some are saying nine to 12 months. So having a, a little bit more of a buffer just when it comes to the emergency fund. And you can also kind of play this by ear, guys. Now, if you're in a position or a job that is relatively unstable, let's say it's very sales orientated, um, very commission-based, things of that nature, you might have to have a much bigger buffer when it comes to the emergency fund. If you're a well-established industry with a regular nine to five and the chance of layoffs or cuts or job losses is a lot more of a minimal possibility, then of course the three to six months will do you well. So all right guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Covered the three steps before you start investing, guys. Again, make sure that you do hit all of these steps. Number one, establishing your goals. Number two, understanding your budget and your behavior. And the final one is building up that emergency fund. So again, guys, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.